One of my favorite genres of gaming is independent horror. Short and sweet experiences that either terrify me or leave me thinking, what the f did I just play? And so to honor this, I wanted to start a new series on this channel, Three Scary Achievement Hunts, in which I play three short horror games and hunt down every last achievement they have to offer. In this, the first episode, we have a game in which we navigate an ocean of blood, a game featuring a camera shy ghost, and a game depicting the horrors of the night shift at a convenience store. So grab a cup of tea or coffee, dim the lights, and get ready for some frights. Ah, shit. And remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy, of course. The first game stepping up to the plate is Iron Lung, with seven achievements up for grabs. This game has been a hot topic of conversation recently in my live streams since Markiplier's movie trailer dropped, so I figured it would be a good one to get started with so I could see what all of the hype was about. And, spoiler alert, I was not disappointed. The story takes place in presumably the distant future, following an event called The Quiet Rapture, during which every star and habitable planet suddenly vanished. The only people left alive were those on starships and space stations, who are now faced with the task of finding usable resources for their survival. Their search takes them to the barren moons across the universe, one of which holds something that pikes their interest, an ocean of blood. Which brings us to the unlucky character that we play as, a convict who is offered freedom in exchange for exploring this strange ocean in a makeshift submarine called the Iron Lung. Roll credits! The game takes place exclusively within this submarine, so if you suffer from claustrophobia, whoo, are you in for a bad time. We're given a map with some coordinates of interest marked on it, a button to press which takes a picture of what's in front of us, and a computer which we'll come back to later. Straight off the bat, we find a note on the floor of the sub and give it a read. But if you are hoping for 50 shades of grey to help us pass the time, you're sorely mistaken. This is not an expedition, it is an execution. Roughly translated, this entire note reads, yeah, you're basically fucked. Good luck, buddy. Finding this note kickstarts our achievement hunt with our first unlock, freedom. To reach the 9 coordinates marked on the map, we need to move across the X and Y axis using the controls in front of us and choose our direction with the compass. Easy stuff. I did it. I'm so, I'm so baffled though. <laughs> I'm so fucking baffled. Okay, yeah, there's... Oh, shit! I did that on purpose for the achievement, and you can't prove otherwise. What I didn't realize was that the map, <laughs> the map was telling me where to go. That may sound really dumb, but hey, I'm really dumb, so here we are. Once I'd figured this out, navigating to the coordinates wasn't too difficult, and pretty soon we were taking pictures of all the pretty sights this ocean of blood had to offer. Okay, nice. So this should be the first anomaly. C cool. What the fuck is that? It's teeth? Is it teeth? It looks kind of like teeth. What the fuck am I looking at? Teeth again? Teeth again? What do you mean? I don't understand. Okay. What the fuck is that? Is that a face? Is that a face? Is this a face? Do I need to be worried about this? Photograph the complete skeleton. That is not a complete skeleton, bro. What do you mean? That is not... That is... It's a face? It's a head? What is it? I don't know. What is it, a house? It's a house? What? Fun. That's fun. That's nice. That's cool. I like that. Mmm. Yeah. 
I so I'm gonna die. Right, anyway. Eventually we reach the eighth marker in the far left corner of the map, which gives us something a little bit different. What the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> what is it? Uh, we're gonna turn our ass around and we're gonna leave. Gotta give props to the developers of the game here. That name is one of the best I've seen for an achievement. And now only one marker left. So we hightail our way over there. Oh! What do I do about that? What do I do about that? What do I do about it? What do I do about it? What do I, what do I, what do I, what? What do you mean? That shouldn't be there. What do you mean? That shouldn't be there. There should be nothing there. Am I about to die? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna fucking die. Oh my god. Okay, let's just hope for the best. Can I take a picture of it? Okay! What the fuck? <laughs> it's fine. It, it's totally fine. In fact, it's normal to have an eyeball the size of a submarine knocking about in an ocean of blood. Anyways, we still need to reach that ninth marker, so onwards and upwards. Come on. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah! <sighs> Scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Beyond the Veil, finish the game. Woo! So it turns out there's some huge beast roaming the ocean that didn't take kindly to our presence. Well, that sucks for them because I still have two achievements left to get. We head right back in and tackle the Burner Subs achievement, which was really easy once you know what you're looking for. Hey, Burner Subs, listen about the SMA. Okay, this entry provides information about an exploration sub that had been torn apart in the ocean before our arrival and how this seems to provide evidence for the discovery of planetary life. But for some reason, no one seems to care. Weird. We also search blood oceans and find out that these are confirmed to be made up of human blood. And now on to the final achievement of Iron Lung, which tasks me with reaching the ninth marker and photographing whatever is waiting for us. And when we get there, it's, it's nothing of interest, to be honest. The picture is basically the same as one we'd found at an earlier set of coordinates. But by discovering this, we earn, you've played this before, and our first scary achievement hunt is completed. Iron Lung actually surprised me with how much horror it was able to instill with such a simple setup. Its biggest asset was by far the sound design. The sounds again, don't like the sounds. Throughout the game you hear a host of strange noises from outside the ship, almost as if something is moving past you or calling out from the ocean. Family. Great, thanks for that. All of this then builds up to the sudden obstruction in front of you and the reveal of the eye when you photograph it. Jump scares aside, that alone was terrifying. And even though I unlocked all of the achievements, it still feels like some stones had been left unturned, especially when it came to the information on the computer. But maybe I'll wait until the movie to find all of that out. All in all, a great horror game with a very unique setup and some fairly simple achievements to hunt down. On to the next. Oh, that's a lovely starting. Marcy was founding her home. Dead. She hung herself. Fantastic. Beautiful. Lovely beginning. Yeah, that basically sets the tone for the rest of this game, to be honest. Sweet 776 is the chonkiest achievement hunt of this video, featuring 11 achievements to track down and requiring multiple playthroughs to do so. The story sees us trying to prove the existence of Sweet 776. Roll credits! On top of this, we need to photograph Marcy in motion even if it kills us. 
Couldn't we just set up some video cameras and be done with it? Go get some gelato. You know, not die? We find ourselves in a rather nice little apartment, all things considered, and make our way through it until we find Marcy's bell, which we've been told to ring. Okay. Marcy? Um, maybe I didn't ring it right? Let's go again. Ring about. Huh. Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. Guess I'll just leave. Oh, God. Yeah, you got that right. And now we're in the game. Sweet 776 operates on the same mechanics as PT, which is a fairly common trope to find within indie horror games nowadays. You work your way through each section in between ringing the bell, finding various items and encountering Marcy as you do. Ready for Creek times. That's not a very good poem, Marcy. Marcy, Marcy, we've spoken about you being terrible. What is this? Hey, hey, hey! Come on, stand, Marcy. Marcy, the last time I heard that noise. Oh, Marcy! Fuck! Ah, oh, Marcy! That's a mannequin. Yep. You're gonna be behind me, aren't you, Marcy? Oh. Ah! Fucking bitch. Holy shit. No matter where you turn, you can feel her anger. She's about to get some of my fucking anger in a minute. Yeah, this game got me a few times. I can't lie. Eventually, you find an axe and use it to break down the planks on this door to find what's inside. Oh my fucking days. Jesus. Oh, no! My name is Joseph Shippen. I write this journal just in case something goes wrong. I want you to know that when I was here, I probably died here. I came to investigate Sweet 776. I did this because Marcy Shippen is my mother. <gasps> I, her only son, Joseph Shippen, 27 years old at the time of this note, wanted to meet her for the first time. Okay, I'm gonna... Oh, God. Marcy. Marcy! Oh! Why are you now in the corner? Marcy. Marcy? Marcy? Mar Marcy, let me out of the room. Marcy, I don't like this game anymore. Marcy, please. Come on. Hello? Eat interact. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Uh, 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 uh. Hello? We got yeeted? Walk away, okay. <laughs> ending two. Completed by taking the ending two path. I think I made the smart choice with that one. You know, finally someone just walks away from the terrifying situation rather than delving deeper. But according to the achievements, there are three endings to unlock. So we do the dumb horror character thing and head further into hell. The next ending was pretty obvious. Instead of walking away, we would ring the bell once again. Easy peasy. We also snag another achievement during this run, a couple clicks, for photographing Marcy five times. But that's just the tip of the jump scare berg for that one, so we'll come back to it later. We break down the door, get attacked by Marcy once again, and then ring the bell to restart the nightmare all over again and unlock Achieve Ending 1. Ring bell for the first time. Why am I... Why am I... Complete Sweet 776 by taking the ending one path. What? That was an ending? You know, I thought there'd be more to it, and I was slightly disappointed by the fade to black. But no time to dwell, because we're right back in in search of the third and final ending.
To unlock this one, the game requires you to find every collectible item and discover every secret within the never changing walls of the suite. To start with, we have the gold bricks, of which there are three. The first two were pretty easy to find as long as you're looking out for them, but the last one requires you to photograph Marcy 10 times in order to unlock this drawer. By doing so, we not only acquire the final brick and unlock Gold Hunter, but also get an achievement for the 10 photographs, Fast Finger. We take the three bricks to this box and use them to unlock it, rewarding us with a pulley handle and another achievement. So that's inside? This was in a girl's fabric face. Whew, that has to be the longest achievement name ever. The pulley handle is needed to access the final room in the basement, in which lies a safe. By solving a puzzle related to the times and colors of the clocks around the house and using the code to open it, we unlock Codecracker. Another collectible we've been hunting for throughout our playthrough are these Polaroid pictures. There are six in total to find and, like the gold bricks, are fairly easy overall. The final one, however, is locked in this safe and when we grab it, we're rewarded with Dreamcatcher and the ability to reach the final ending. We take the pictures to the corkboard in the living room, break into the boarded room to find it empty this time, and then head back down to find Marcy. And a much less murdery version of Marcy, I might add. I'm happy you got this far and reached me, my true self. It's been many years since I've seen you, my son, so long that I've actually forgotten your name. I am truly sorry for that. I can see you've come here with the intention to photograph me to prove to the world I exist. However, that's impossible and you knew that from the start. Shall I remind you again? It does not exist anymore. It has not been around for over 30 years. Where you stand right now is your apartment, the apartment that sits on the land where my home used to be. What? None of this is real and none of this happened. Just like I never killed myself, I was murdered. What? To which, during your upbringing, you were seen as the son of a crazy mother destined to follow my path. The mental strain and criticism got to you the way, the same way it got to me. Don't become me, Joseph. Oh, you remember our name? Now come to me and let me remove you from this place. Go out there and live, never come back. <clears throat> what? Who the fuck murdered you, bro? Bruh. Press E to wake up. Bro, what happened to your face? Okay, I'll wake up. Are you going to jump scare me? Oh! Achieve ending number three. So our mom was murdered when we were a kid, which led us to not being able to trust the reality of our own mind. What a lovely story. And one that's not over quite yet. We still have two more achievements to collect and both offer a fair amount of challenge. First up, we jump back in with our camera and set about capturing 15 shots of Marcy in motion. During the game, you experience seven different encounters with Marcy. And if you're quick enough, you can grab two photos at each, maybe three if you've got especially fast fingies. And I'm sure you can see where the challenge of this one comes in. But one of these encounters provided the key to unlocking this achievement very easily. Oh, I got to 10 off of that. I got five shots off of that. Mwah! <laughs> yes! I had no idea that I could take pictures during this segment and genuinely thought it was just there to scare the bejesus out of me. View interior. Oh, Marcy! What's going on, bro? Marcy! Marcy! Let me out of the TV! Let me out of the TV. Let me out of the TV, please. Let me out of the TV. She's coming. Eh. As it turns out, you can actually grab up to six shots of her moving here, making the 15 mark considerably easier to hit. The final achievement requires us to speedrun the game and finish it in under two minutes. 
How the hell am I going to do that, I hear you asking? Well, by not actually really playing it. To beat this time, you need to beeline for the bell in the apartment and then immediately return to the elevator and leave. Do it quick enough and you'll be awarded with, you probably didn't even enjoy the experience. And with that out of the way, we have our second achievement hunt of the video completed. Sweet 776 was a pretty solid game all in all. The scares were good and definitely caught me off guard a few times, the tension was well executed, and the overall gameplay wasn't too bad considering it was a PT clone. My main gripe with it was that some of the sequences just felt a bit too long and drawn out, like having to walk all the way back to the front door of the suite after ringing the bell for the first time, just to have to walk all the way back to the bell, and then repeat the process again. These moments sometimes screwed with the pacing and just felt a bit boring overall. But I still enjoyed it and would recommend it as one to try out yourself. But for us, it's time to jump into the final game of this video. If you're a fan of indie horror games, then it's more than likely that you've already heard of Chiller's Art Games. These PlayStation 1 looking little gems are a must play if you're a fan of the genre. And yet, I haven't played a single one. But before you go on subscribing from the channel, I'm proud to say that that changed for this video. Our third game on the list is The Convenience Store, released in 2020 and featuring five achievements for us to hunt down. The game is fairly simple in its premise, as most Chiller's Art games are. We play as a presumably young girl working her nightly shifts at a convenience store. You know it's coming. Roll credits. The first night is pretty uneventful, allowing us to get to grips with the game and the concept. We head to work, meet our manager, nah, isn't he adorable, and clock in before getting started on our task for the evening, checking the expiration dates on the shelved products. We throw away the ones that are expired and eventually unlock our first achievement, expiration date, once the task is done. For some reason, this is the only one of our nightly tasks to have an achievement attached to it. No idea why. Towards the end of the night, we receive a package with our name on it, which kickstarts the nightmare ahead of us. Before the night ends, we check the CCTV cameras a few times and earn security on our fifth peak. Nice and easy. Inside the package is a videotape, which we watch closely. What? Okay, I don't get it. Over the next few nights, we head back to our nightly shifts, but are accompanied by a series of ghostly happenings. Doors opening and locking by themselves, dumpsters being overturned, and this fucker. <gasps> oh God! Oh my god. Once we've had about enough of being haunted, we're presented with a final videotape and a choice. Play the tape once more, or put it in a box and mail it to someone else. Are we talking like the ring? Are we talking some Sadako nonsense? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Come. Are you sure? Yeah, why not? Get ending one. I'll save you having to read this wall of text. It literally took me like three minutes to do so and sum it up for you. The hauntings all occurred because a man committed a murder-suicide on the property, which was apparently very brutal. Following us getting rid of the tape, we then had the good sense to quit our job and with the manager also found dead, the store closed down soon after and remained so. However, we sometimes walk past and still hear a child's voice. How the videotapes factor into the story, honestly, I'm not sure. And now, with three achievements already unlocked, it was time for one more playthrough to grab the other two. The first one required us to take one of the bags of expired food out to this fine gentleman and give it to him, unlocking Homeless. 
Side note, more businesses in real life need to do this shit. If you're throwing it away anyway, you can give it to someone who needs it. To grab our final achievement, we played through the entire game again, this time a hardened veteran to the jump scares, and then chose to play the tape instead of sending it away. Are you sure? I hate when games do this. Like, I don't know if I'm sure, bro. I, I, I don't know. Yes. Oh, damn, that's our apartment. Hola. Comma. Comma. Can't do anything. Is there someone in the doorway? I... I can't move. Oh, hello! Well, we did it! <laughs> what? I honestly don't know what I expected. And with that, our third and final achievement hunt of today's video is completed. The convenience store definitely took me in a direction I wasn't expecting, but I wasn't mad about it. It was awesome to finally dive into one of these games and experience it for myself, and I can definitely see what all of the hype is about. The way it builds tension, the execution of the scares, and the old school graphics all made for a very fun playthrough. It definitely goes to show that you don't need heavily realistic looking graphics to deliver an enjoyable game. You just need an immersive environment and an engaging story. Take note, AAA developers. My only two gripes with this one was the wall of text after the first ending. I would have liked this to have been communicated differently, but I also get that the game was over and this was basically an epilogue, so I'm not too mad. And then my second gripe was the small number of achievements. It definitely felt like more could have been added, and might have helped the pacing of the hunt if there were one or two to grab in the later nights. But obviously that's not something every gamer is going to think about, so it didn't detract from the game itself. Overall, solid game, and I'm very excited to test out some more from Chiller's Art. And there we have it. Our first three scary achievement hunts video is done and dusted, and honestly, I had a blast and would really like to continue with this series. If you also enjoyed it and want to see more, let me know by leaving a like on the video and a comment down below. Also, if there are any indie horror games that you would like to see me try in future videos, I'd love to hear them in the comments, so let me know which ones. And of course, subscribe to the channel for a brand new trophy or achievement hunt every single week and to support me as a creator. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great day and happy hunting.